In this video, I'm going to go over how to model the rook. So again, this was the pawn that we modeled previously. I'm just going to delete him, start from scratch. Backdrop item, quick cleanup. We'll just go through, delete him. Let's throw this rook right in the scene. Again, that's going to come in at world center. I'd like another thing at world center. So left click, sides 12, segments 1, right click. Again, one thing that I did was I have a pen, so I, when I right clicked, I twitched a little bit, which changed my sides from 12 to 11. So I just want to hit 12, hit enter. Now I know that I have 12. Again, that was my mistake when I clicked. I just twitched a little bit. So again, make sure that says 12. Space order dot the tool. Other thing I can do, select all the polygons going around. Make sure that that says 12. Again, with this, we want to make sure that we have a good even amount because we need to make these little towers. And if we have an odd amount, there would be two of these little towers kind of touching each other as opposed to being spaced apart. And we'll see that here in a little bit. So again, relying on our front view. Scale him up, get him into place. The other thing, I want to move this backdrop image a little bit. So to do this, I'm going to hit item mode, select my backdrop image, W to move. And now I can just move him over a little bit. Because again, when I cropped this image, it wasn't 100% in the center. But this should work just fine. So switch back to our mesh. Just best practices. Let's double click our mesh. Name this Rook. Actually name it Rook. <laughs> there we go. So M for material. I'm going to make a new material. Call this one Rook. Shading tree have the pawn material in here. I really don't need that. Ideally, I just would have started in a new scene, but that's okay. It's a good review. I can delete that other material just by right-clicking and hitting delete. Material transparency, set that to 30%. Now I can see my image underneath. So again, this one I'll do quite a bit. This one and the king I'll do quite a bit faster than the pawn piece. So middle mouse, scale up. Now, kind of a thing to speed up your workflow is I can drop the tool by hitting spacebar, right click, or middle mouse click, lasso select to grab this bottom polygon, and then move scale and rotate it. But, let's undo this a few times. If I am in polygon mode, middle mouse click, grab this one, have this polygon selected, I can move it up, scale it up. Now I want to quickly move this one. I can hold the W key down, so now I'm and move. Oops, I have to make sure that I'm actually in move. So move is active. I could move this if I wanted to. If I hold the W key down, I can now middle mouse click, let go of middle mouse. It selects that bottom polygon and then I can let go of the W key. And now I can go right into moving this. So again, you have to go from moving a polygon to moving a polygon. It's a little bit more of an advanced technique. But again, if you don't want to do that, Escape key, middle mouse, grab, move. So again here, I'm just going to do that same series of extrudes. I'm going to middle mouse click, mesh edit, extrude, right click, pull down. Again, this one's a little bit wider. Do that edge loop. Oops, sorry, loop slice. 50% is fine. R to scale it up a little bit, something like that. Spacebar, bevel, grab our blue handle, not the red one, get that round edge, switch back to polygon mode, really carefully select our bottom polygon. Again, if we want, we can go back into perspective, grab that bottom polygon, and even if we want, we can technically just work right in this 3D viewport like this. So I could extrude, pull down, Scale out. The only thing is now I'm kind of fighting with the camera, I'm trying to say, okay, where is or isn't this? So again, it's usually just easiest to just base it right off the camera angle. And again, this, mine's not currently lined up, so let's grab the whole thing, move it up a little bit, and if we want, we could scale the whole thing up, something like that. It's going to be a little bit closer. So there we go. So extrude, right click, pull it down. Again, I'm focusing on the left side here. You can focus on the left side or the right side. doesn't really matter. So again, this we have kind of a gradual inward curve and a gradual outward curve. So again, same stuff 
we've been doing with the pawn. Move, scale, and rotate this into place. Double click in edge mode, again, hotkeys wise. If you look, it says vertice one, edge two, polygon. If there was a little bit of space there, it'd say three. So this is hotkeys one, two, three, W, E, R. So again, I'm gonna use those quite a bit throughout this. So again, three to select polygon, middle mouse, extrude, right click, pull down. And again, this is something that the more you do it, the more you get the hang of it. So select your polygon, extrude, switch to scale, scale it out, extrude, pull it down, extrude, oops, not extrude, my bad, loop slice, be under mesh edit tab. You can right click and pull this up. So again, I'm doing this process pretty quick. I'm relying on hotkeys, but as I'm doing it, so going back to this, as soon as I activate the tool, you can see over here what tool gets selected. Even if I was on this window, it'd say what tool is getting selected. The only thing I'm doing is extruding, loop slice, move, and scale. I'm not even rotating using any other tools. And then the last thing that I'm doing, scale this up a little bit, is using that bevel tool. So again, double click this edge, it grabs the loop all the way around. Bevel, grab the blue one, pull it out like so. Spacebar, double click, bevel, pull out the blue one. Again, this one, we're losing some of that roundness. So what we're gonna do is hit undo a few times, have that stick out a little bit, bevel, and then pull this in, something like that. And again, this is getting a little bit pointy, so I'll just pop that up to two for roundness level. This one I can probably pop back down to three, so bevel, set it to one. Pull that out, and the bottom of this is good. So again, once you get the hang of this, it starts going really, really fast. And again, if I'm going a little bit fast for you, I'd say jump back to the pawn video and watch that. So again, this is just move, scale, rotate, move, scale, rotate, extrude, extrude, extrude. <laughs> just a whole series of using the same exact tools over and over again. And again, this is on purpose. You guys can kind of get exposed to doing this. So again, this little section I did while I was blabbing. And again, it's handled just like down here. So the top is going to be a little bit more complicated. Again, we're going to try to simplify it a little bit. We want to have a few little crowns with little spaces in between. So let's turn this off. So what I'm going to do is grab this top polygon, do an extrude, switch to scale after I right click and pull this in. And now I'm going to use these as those little crown pieces. So we have a total of again 12 going around. So if I switch to the top view, again I'm going to use these pie menus quite a bit. It's just control space bar. So top, bottom, perspective, right view. These are just all the views. Or again, I can go over here and switch it to the top view. So let's grab those two, those two, those two, and those two. Switch to the perspective. Now you can just kind of see what I've grabbed here. Extrude, right click, pull these up. So again, if I compare this to the image over here, this one has six towers. This one, my version only has four. Again, we don't need this to be perfect by any means. If I wanted this to be six, I probably could have done a little bit more pre-planning and said, okay, I want 24 edges around and do every third polygon, whatever. Um, so again, that's just a little bit of pre-planning. You wanna kind of look at your object that you're gonna model beforehand and tackle it. But again, I wanted to just simplify this, make it a little bit easier. So again, from here, we could potentially call this good only other thing, let's move this over a little bit. So again, selecting our backdrop item in item mode, I'm gonna bring this around. I can see that we kind of have a low lip right here that comes up to a higher lip. So to achieve this, I'm just gonna grab this polygon right here and just move it up a little bit. So now we kind of have that effect going here. And again, it's not 100% accurate to this, but overall, if we just seen this shape sitting on a chessboard, we're going to know, yes, that's the rook. So again, this guy is good. Let's go ahead, save the file. 